So today, like the title suggests, I want to talk about different filling materials for your teeth and the difference between them and maybe which one would be best for you. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, wait a minute, isn't she a dental hygienist? Why is she talking about fillings? Isn't that like a doctor's job? Well, you probably didn't know this, but I'm actually a restorative hygienist. So in school, we actually learned about different filling materials and we trained how to place them into patients' mouths. So first filling I'd like to talk about is tooth colored fillings or what we call in the dental world composites. Now the biggest thing you should know about composite material is it is not as strong as tooth structure. What that means is over the years it actually wears down faster than the tooth around it so eventually it has to be replaced or redone. This may need to happen a few times within your lifetime. Now the biggest concern with that is that every time we replace a filling, a couple of things happen. Number one, we actually have to remove a little bit more tooth structure in preparation for the new restorative material. What that means is every time we remove more and more tooth structure, eventually there might not be enough tooth structure to put a filling in and you might need to in fact get a crown or a cap on that tooth instead of a filling. Now the other thing that happens every time we touch a tooth with a handpiece or a drill is the nerve gets agitated and if you keep having to agitate the nerve eventually the nerve is like I'm done and it just dies and then you need a root canal. Sorry that was like a weird I don't know if that's what nerves do. They don't talk first of all but they give out and they die so it's not good to keep having to replace fillings now the other thing about composite material which is basically a bunch of resins and plastics is it can actually shrink into itself causing microscopic leakage between the tooth and the filling and that can result in recurrent cavities or recurrent decay so then again you're gonna have to redo that filling take out more tooth structure issues 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 so there's that moving on to filling material number two silver fillings or amalgams now the biggest thing that the general public is aware of about the dangers of amalgams is the mercury content well maybe this is new to you but silver fillings contain mercury which is a known poison that can cause a lot of issues to our body now you might be asking if we know it's a poison why are we putting in our mouth? Well, mercury is a liquid metal, so it helps to bond all the other metal materials together and makes it more pliable and easier to compact into your tooth. So it's helpful in that sense, but it can wreak havoc in other health related ways. The other big problem with silver fillings that probably most people aren't aware of is that unlike composite material, silver fillings are actually stronger than tooth structure especially if you have a medium to a larger sized silver filling. Over the years, as you're eating and chewing and grinding your teeth, the strength of the silver filling inside of your tooth causes your tooth to fracture off. The other reason why it may cause a tooth structure to fracture off is because of a phenomenon called creep. Also, that word is so weird. Well, both words, phenomenon and creep. And yes, creep is an actual dental term. So what happens is over the years, the silver filling material can expand, again, causing pressure on tooth structure, creating fractures or even cracking off a portion of your tooth, which again is going to result in you having to redo the filling or get a crown and eventually potentially a root canal, etc. Issues, 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 again. So now you're probably thinking, okay, Christina, tooth colored fillings, bad. Silver fillings, bad. What do we do? Well, there is one more material. In my opinion, it's magical. And this material is gold. Oh. The thing with gold is it very closely resembles tooth structure in terms of its strength and malleability which means unlike composite, it's not going to wear down and unlike amalgams, it's not going to cause your tooth to break. Some patients that I've seen with gold inlays or onlays, I ask them, hey, how long have you had this uh, gold filling in there? And they go, oh man, I don't even remember, like 30, 40 years? Long time. So I'm thinking, nice. And the other thing is, especially if you have a good specialist that works with gold, 
Man, those gold inlays look beautiful. So fact, I have some tooth colored fillings in my mouth and I know that eventually, if and when I need to replace them, I'm totally gonna ask for gold. Now, last thing I wanna mention is you should definitely have a chat with your dentist to determine what kind of filling is best for you. Because in truth, it actually really depends on where this filling is going to be, how big it's gonna be, and most importantly, if there are already some existing fillings made of different types of metal material. Because here's the thing, even though gold is a great material, if you already have a bunch of silver fillings and then you're gonna put a gold one somewhere, there's another phenomenon that happens in the mouth when you touch two different filling materials together as you bite down on them. And that phenomenon is called galvanic shock. As the name suggests, you actually experience an electric shock in your mouth every time those two different metals come together. So that's why it's super important, like I said, to have a chat with your dentist before you decide what kind of materials to put into your teeth to make sure that that doesn't happen. So yeah, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. If you guys have more questions, please feel free to comment them below. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and share with your friends and take care of your teeth.